let's look at the first of four solutions that we are going to consider uh, regarding the interaction between solid surfaces and a moving plate. In particular, we are going to consider the momentum effect on various uh, external objects. In example one, we will look at a flat plate. In example two, we will look at a curved plate. In example three, we will look at a transition piece from a pipe going from a larger diameter to a smaller diameter. And in the last example, we will look at an elbow uh, where a pipe uh, changes uh, direction and as a result the fluid undergoes a uh, change in momentum as it flows through the elbow. We have to be systematic and there are few basic guiding principles which you should follow. The first is draw a control volume. The control volume concept is very important and if you look at our control volume, in this case, a dotted line encompassing the plate and the fluid which is impacting the plate. We draw our axes, Y and X axis, using the usual convention and the supposed momentum force that we expect to occur. Fx, the, F, the x component, and Fy, the y component. We are told that water flows at 5 kilograms from a nozzle. The jet is 25 millimeters in diameter, hits a flat plate. You are supposed to calculate the direction and magnitude of the force on the plate in the x direction. So what we do is, we need to, first of all, write down the basic equations. If you look at the equations that we have, first of all, we have to consider the mass flow rate. We are given it is 5 kilograms per second. And the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Okay, we usually use the symbol M with a little dot at the top. The volumetric flow rate is equal to the mass flow rate divided by the density. So the mass flow rate is 5. The density is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter for water. This gives us... 5 times 10 to the power of minus 3 cubic meters per second or liters, 5 liters per second. But I would advise you not to use liters per second because you will get confused about the calculations. Remember, we have to work in terms of the SI units. Now we evaluate the velocity, which is the volume flow rate divided by the area. We got the diameter of the jet and the velocity is the volume flow rate divided by the area. And this gives us 10.19 meters per second. Now, the calculation of the momentum force is extremely straightforward, but we have to be very careful. We are told that in the x direction, the velocity is 10.19 meters per second. In the X direction but leaving we do not have any velocity leaving in the X direction and that's where our control volume becomes extremely important for us to focus as you can see the water the water impinges on the plate 
and it lifts vertically up and down. There is no water which lifts in the x direction. So now let's go on to the solution, which is extremely easy. If you are systematic, you will see that the momentum force is equal to the mass flow rate times velocity leaving minus velocity entering the control volume. Mass flow rate given 5, leaving 0, entering 10.19 meters per second velocity. Resultant is, this is the force on the water. The negative sign indicates that the force on the water acts to the left. Therefore, by Newton's third law, the force on the plate acts to the right. Now let's look at the second example, which is similar, but we have to consider the fact that, for example, the velocity leaving the control volume has some component in the y direction and another component in the x direction. So you cannot just consider the velocity entering and the velocity leaving because Remember, the velocities are vectors and they have to be resolved for you to apply Newton's second law, in this case for fluid mechanics. As you've seen, we've drawn the control volume. You're told this is a jet of steam, mass flow rate 0 0.035 kg per second, discharges from a nozzle at 80 meters per second, Jet strikes a stationary turbine blade which deflects the steam by 150. So the deflection is 150 degrees. It can be clockwise or anti-clockwise, but we have chosen to consider the deflection as shown in the diagram. You will be equally right if you consider the deflection anti-clockwise. Okay, now, if you can see our solution, what we have done is as follows. Velocity entering in the x direction only into the control volume. As it leaves, there are two component, components. There's an x and a y component. We draw our control volume. We write out the two important coordinate system and the components Fx and Fy of the momentum, the resultant momentum, then what do we do? All we have to do is use the momentum equation. Now, if you look at the momentum equation, the x direction Entering, leaving is 80 cos 150 or minus 80 cos 30, which is minus 69.3 meter. We apply the momentum equation for the x direction and we get a negative 5 newtons. In the y direction, there is no velocity entering in the y direction but there is one leaving in the y direction, downwards, which is minus 80 sine 30, which is minus 40. We apply again the momentum equation. Mass flow rate leaving is minus 40. Entering is zero. And we get minus 1.34 newtons in the negative direction of y. Okay, let's look now at how we resolve our forces. The resultant force, Fx squared plus Fy squared square root, gives us 5.18 Newton. The resultant angle, Y component over the X component, so it is minus 15 degrees. We draw a little picture. Don't be shy to draw a little picture where our force Fx is minus 5, taking positive as to the right, 
and Fy as negative 1.39, where Y positive is moving up. The red arrow signifies the force on the steam by Newton's third law, the force on the blade is equal and opposite. Now, let's look at the third example. Here again, we have the same scenario. I'll go over it pretty uh, quickly. We draw our control volume. But now we have to consider the fact that there are pressure forces before and after. Okay, in addition to the velocity changes, there are differences in pressure. So here we are told the water discharges from a nozzle at 30 litres per second. You are given the pressure at the nozzle inlet 1, diameter 45 mm, 800 kilopascals. And at the outlet 2, diameter 300 millimeter and 50 pascal. So here, the only new thing we have to consider is in addition to the momentum force of examples 1 and 2, we have to take care of the fact that there are pressure forces before and after. In the first two examples, the pressure throughout the system was atmospheric pressure. So there was no necessity. To consider that. So we write down the momentum as Fx is equal to minus 5.32 Newton, therefore the force on the nozzle is 5.32. How did we get that? We start off with here the area of the nozzle at the start and then at the end the area, we get the velocity entering as 18.9 meters per second and leaving as 42.4. We get the pressure at point 0.1, pressure at the point 0.2, mass flow rate, remember, is 30 liters, becomes 30 divided by 1000 times the density of water makes it 30 kilograms per second. We plug all this in to our momentum equation. Left-hand side are the pressure forces and the resultant momentum force. Right-hand side, the velocity changes and the mass flow rate. And that's how we get the momentum force. It would be a good exercise for you to go through this carefully on your own. The figures are given here. And finally, the last example, if we look at an elbow, very similar. The only difference between example 3 and 4 is that the elbow has a constant diameter. Okay, so if you look, it goes through 90 degrees, but there's a constant diameter, so the velocity does not change in magnitude, but there is a change in direction. The areas are the same, and we can neglect the losses because of the short distances involved, so that the pressure 1 is actually equal to the pressure 2, in this case, because we are told, we are told that the pressure drop across the band is negligible. So we form the equation at the in the x direction, in the y direction, okay, and we simplify the equations and combine the equations to give you the resultant. Now, the interesting situation arises that if you notice the force in the x direction and in the y direction, Fx and Fy are equal. So the resultant Fr is given by this relationship. Depends on the pressure, the area, the mass flow rate and the velocity times the square root of 2. The angle is 45 degrees because Fx and Fy are equal. And 
not forgetting all along we keep our eyes on the control volume. That takes us to the end of these four questions which you should study carefully and thoroughly.